sovereign move of God, it will just bring God's people together. How many of you know we need to get together? This lost world needs to see us as one. Hallelujah. They need to see us not only in love with Jesus. How are they going to know that we're in love with Jesus? By the love that we have for one another. Isn't that what the Bible says? They'll know that you're my sons and daughters by the love that you have for one another. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Y'all hungry? Are you hungry for God? Where there is a true heaven sent revival, there will be a missing to me now. Don't let me lose you here. There will be a manifestation of the supernatural presence of God. There will be signs and wonders. There will be miracles. For the day of the miracle is not over. As some would have us to believe. But this is what a sovereign... How can God show up and there not be something supernatural? He's a supernatural God. And we're a supernatural people. Come on, church. If God shows up, there's going to be something supernatural. Something you can't do. Something you can't make happen. Praise God. Blinded eyes will be opened. The dumb will talk and the lame will walk. Burdens lifted, yokes destroyed. There will be deliverance. Addictions will be broken. The lost will be saved. The prodigal sons and daughters will come home. throughout this nation and around the world. They are experiencing great outpourings of God's presence and power. And they're right here in West Virginia. We have been experiencing great outpourings. Thousands have been, it's been recorded that thousands just recently have been saved in southern West Virginia. Do you understand that this is a sovereign move of God and you can't make it happen? But he's already here. I didn't come here, listen to me, everybody look at me. I didn't come here to try to make something happen. I'm here because something is happening. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make anything out of this. God's already made something out of this. Hallelujah. He's going to touch you. He's going to heal you. If you're lost, He's going to save you. If you're backslidden, He's going to call you home. If, I, I, I'm telling you, there's nothing. There is nothing impossible with our God. Hallelujah. Praise His holy name. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Am I helping anybody? I'm trying to set the course. For this weekend, I want you to have a valid understanding of what true revival is. I want you to leave here knowing that it's not just about having an evangelist, a prophet evangelist like myself come to town and expect that he's got the revival in his pocket. It don't happen. I didn't come with the revival in my pocket. Are you listening to me? The revival has to come from God. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from a message I preach. It doesn't come from a song that we sing. It comes when God opens up the heavens and begins to pour out His presence and His glory. But you've got to want it. And something tells me somebody wanted this. Something tells me somebody had been praying. Somebody had been fasting. Somebody had been calling on Jesus. Hallelujah. Our nation's in trouble. And revival is our only hope. Praise God. Throughout history, there have been great revivals. 
and awakenings, outpourings, times that have been recorded. We Books have been written about those times. There are times when God visits his people either with judgment or blessing. The scriptures are full of it. He opens windows and portals of opportunities. And the, but you need to understand this, that the window will not be open long. Not long ago, I put a prophecy out on Facebook. And one of the things that God said to me during about this outpouring that's taking place all over the world. I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. 60 miles from me is Terre Haute, Indiana. And they've been experiencing an outpouring of the Holy Spirit for the last five years. And it's beginning even in, in a denomination and beginning to awaken. There is an outpouring taking place in the Philippines. And just in the last six months, over 100,000 people have been saved in the Philippines. There is an awakening taking place in Ireland. Are you listening to me? And there is an awakening taking place right here in the mountains of West Virginia. My God, somebody, gotta give God some praise. Whoa, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. But he said, tell my people that the window won't be open long. You know what that means? You need to get it now. I understand that. You all understand that. You're a very intelligent people. If you're saved, you're some of the most intelligent people on the face of this earth. Hallelujah. You're smart enough to get saved. Amen. Hallelujah. And you need to understand that what God is doing here right now is that we need to rush into it. I know we have our skeptics. I know there are those who say, well, we've never seen it like this before. Well, that's the beautiful thing about God. He never does anything the same way twice. Amen. You know why? Because we want to make a religion out of it. And if God don't move this time like he moved the last time, it must not be God. We've never seen it done like this before. We've been in the ministry. We've been saved for years. We've been in the church for years. And we've just never seen it on a football field before. Well, I've come to tell you that my God has showed up. And he's going to show up. And he's going to show his power and his glory right here. Woo! Glory to God. And those people, those skeptics, those doubters... Well, you don't have to worry about them. It won't stop what God's going to do. Hallelujah. He has opened a window in heaven. There's a portal been opened. i got to share this with you. <laughs> we left Beckley. It was pouring the rain. Hallelujah. My wife and I are preaching to each other, encouraging each other, quoting scripture. Amen. Believe in God. And just as I come into uh, Mullins, Mullins man, the road was dry. And I looked over a mountain and I seen a hole. I seen a hole in that black sky. And that's, it was just as blue and pretty. And I said, that's got to be over the ball field. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God has opened a portal in heaven. It's a supernatural thing that you may not be able to see it with your natural eye, but I guarantee you that he is rending the heavens and God is going to come down and he's going to shake everything that needs to be shaken. Everything that's light and fickle and has no substance. God's going to reveal it. God's going to show us the real thing. Somebody give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. But God's not. Hallelujah. This pastors is for our children our youth 
It's for all who hunger and thirst after God. The young, the old, the rich, and the poor. No matter who you are, this is for you. You're here tonight because you heard the sound. A couple of months ago, I can't remember exactly, I believe it was a couple of months ago, I was in my prayer closet and I heard the sound of abundance. If you're going to speak prophetically, you have to hear prophetically. You see, Elijah, before he could speak prophetically, he had to hear. Elijah heard a sound that Ahab didn't hear, and he was standing right next to Elijah. You see, Ahab heard something in the spirit realm. Ahab heard something that that evil king couldn't hear. He heard the sound of abundance. Are you listening to me? Glory to God. He heard the sound of the, of the, of the heavens being rent. That's what he heard. Whoa, my God. He heard the sound of the heavens being opened up. That land had been in a drought for three and a half years. And the natural result of a, fa of a drought was a famine. And I'm telling you, West Virginia has been in a famine, but God is about to pour out His Holy Spirit, and the famine is over, and the drought is over. Are you listening to me? I have prophesied to the mountains. I have prophesied to the hills. I have prophesied to the valleys, to the rivers, to the cities and the waste places. West Virginia shall live again. Somebody praise Him. Woo! Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. He's here to set the captive free, to break the chains of sin, to open prison doors, to heal the sick, to bind up the brokenhearted, to restore you, to repair you, to revive you. He is here in all of his majesty. Would the worship team make their way up here? If you're lost and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, if you've never been born again, in just a moment, I'm going to give an altar call. If you're a prodigal son or daughter and you're away from home, this would be a good time to come home to Jesus. If you're tired and you're weary, He's here to touch you. If you're sick, He's here to heal you. I want you to stand with me. I want to be real blunt with you. I'm not here to entertain you. I can get in my car and go to Indianapolis. I don't need a place to preach. But I do need to be obedient to God. I'm here because God directed us here. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here to preach you a cute little message. I'm here to bring you a thus saith the Lord, and that's what I've done tonight. This, what I have shared with you tonight, is the reality of a sovereign move of God. If you want that, if you want that, then you'll have to be a participator. You cannot just be a spectator. You're going to have to get involved in this. You're going to have to worship Him. You're going to have to want this with all your heart. You're going to have to hunger. You're going to have to thirst after this. Do you understand that God's not going to run anybody down to give this to them? Praise God. Right now. You need something from God tonight. I want you to move out and begin to come towards these altars.
Come on, you need a touch from God tonight. Did you just come out here? Did you just come out here to be entertained? 